Then, at that 45 minutes that, uh, that Bush and Ulmer spent together in the White House, only the two of them, uh, Bush apparently already um, reassured Ulmer nothing was going to happen, the administration was not going to adopt the recommendations. And after the report was published, after Prime Minister Olmert um, demanded that members of his cabinet uh, not discuss it, after he said that he, that he himself is not going to discuss it because it's a uh, domestic American affairs, doesn't touch Israel, um, after he did address it uh, by saying that there is no linkage whatsoever uh, between the problems in Iraq and the problems that uh, Israelis and Arabs have, uh, after all that, uh, senior administration officials once again reassured Jewish community leaders here in America um, that there was nothing to worry about. There was no linkage, no American initiative, no threat of, of proactive uh, U.S. diplomacy. So we can all celebrate the miracle of Hanukkah 2006, the threats of the evil James Antiochus Baker III did not <laughs> last even eight minutes, let alone eight days. Um, <laughs> But with all seriousness, um, I want to say, look, there are many things to criticize in the Baker-Hamilton report. I do think that the notion of linkage between um, resolving the Arab-Israeli conflict and healing Iraq was overstated. And I do think that the reference that the report makes to re the right of return is, is misfortunate in the sense that this is a phrase that is not in the uh, lexicon of American diplomacy. Um, I do think that prescribing in advance a full Israeli withdrawal from the Golan Heights uh, uh, is, is, is not a prudent thing to do. And I do think that the report sometimes is poorly worded and sometimes even surprising that uh, uh, a person with, with lawyerly skills such as James Baker would, uh, would produce such a, such a um, document. But, but saying all that and with all that in mind, I do think that for Israel and its friends here in America to reject offhand to dismiss um, the report section on Israel, Arab-Israeli peace, for them to vilify the authors as, as they did, um, and to do so while constructing what I believe is a straw man of a linkage. Uh, in other words, the commission did not, did not say that addressing the Arab-Israeli conflict would heal Iraq. Uh, what the, what the commission rather uh, asserted was that without addressing it, such healing uh, would not be uh, uh, possible. Now, one can agree or disagree with that assertion, but it's not a dangerous one. It's not a threat to the national security of Israel uh, to, 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 to claim that or to assert that. Uh, and it's definitely not grounds for totally dismissing uh, the, the report. So to reject it, to vilify the, the, uh, the, uh, the authors, I think is, is intellectually dishonest, politically counterproductive, and very misfortunate. Now, why misfortunate? Because just as Americans need hope for uh, a resolution of the, of the Iraq crisis, um, Israelis and Palestinians desperately, desperately, as, as Ziad said, uh, need signs of hope coming from Washington, that Washington would support them if they take the necessary steps uh, toward reengagement and, and negotiations. Um, it, had also, it had also misfortunate because this report did have the potential, I think, to sway the administration from its uh, uh, democracy-centric, if you will, dogmatism uh, that, that characterizes its approach to the Middle East towards a more pragmatic approach that actually in recent years um, characterized Israel's regional strategy. Um, my, my, my friends on the, on the panel, I'm sure, will, will discuss uh, uh, the, 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 this issue further uh, regarding Israeli-Syrian negotiations uh, later on. Uh, but Syria really is a great example for the difference in America's approach and Israel's approach, uh, America's more dogmatic and Israel's more pragmatic approach. We can talk about it later a little bit. Um, I will end maybe with one last um, thought um, about the Baker-Hamilton report. Um, and again, it goes back to the, to the notion of, of, of linkage. Um, 
linkage, as I understand it, as was, as was uh, pointed out by the, by the report, is one that is focused on public opinion, on Arab public opinion. Uh, in other words, simply put, what it says is that even if, it, even if such linkage only exists in the mind of Arabs, um, Americans cannot ignore it um, if they expect to have Arab cooperation on Iraq. Um, and Arab public opinion is important. Uh, we often discard it as, as the Arab street be, being irrelevant because of the non-democratic nature of most uh, Arab states. But even in non-democratic societies, public opinion plays a very important role. The point I'm, I want to make is that uh, in uh, Israeli society, which is democratic, public opinion plays a very important role. And um, Therefore, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, I think, that the Commission did not pay more attention to Israeli public opinion. Had it invested more time and thought, I think, in consulting with Israelis um, and in marketing the recommendations in Israel as it did in America, um, perhaps, perhaps, uh, it could have been better received by uh, Israelis, by the Israeli government, and maybe by pro-Israel the pro-Israel community in America, and maybe uh, I wouldn't be standing here today to, uh, I think, uh, bemoan the, uh, uh, or, or I see it as, as, as having to bemoan uh, uh, the um, demise of, of, of this report on the, on the American public uh, arena. I'll end here. Thank you. Thank you, Ori. You stole my uh, Hanukkah miracle uh, <laughs> opening. Uh, but I'll, I'll do it nonetheless, uh, at least in part. This is the season for miracles, and uh, not only with Hanukkah, but Christmas certainly as well. Uh, that being said, it would take a miracle to uh, improve upon the, the willingness of the Bush administration to undertake not even the, uh, the recommendations in the, in the uh, Baker-Hamilton report, which to my mind represent an effort to bring U.S. policy back uh, into a, a, a stream which is uh, uh, led by uh, the Washington foreign policy establishment. Uh, where it has strayed under the Bush administration far to the right uh, under the leadership of people who believe, in contrast to all of their predecessors in the post-war era, uh, that U.S. policy in the region, in the words of the Secretary of State, has been a mi mirage which has failed to protect U.S. interests. Uh, it, it's, it's not even a question of implementing specific policies. It's a whole requirement to change the conceptual view of U.S. policy in the Middle East. Uh, and it indeed would take a, uh, uh, quite a miracle to get us back to a point of a U.S. policy uh, based on ele elements which uh, themselves failed, have failed in the past 40 years uh, to end uh, Israel's occupation, to give Palestinians and Israelis alike uh, a sense of a more secure and uh, dignified future. Uh, and I think Ori very clearly uh, uh, made it much easier for us to put these recommendations, certainly insofar as they relate to the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, on a shelf that we all probably have, on an empty space on the shelf that we all probably have, are reserved for Middle East uh, white papers and Brookings reports and so forth, which, which uh, are collecting dust, as this one probably will as well. Um, but w in, in, in broad terms, um, in broad terms, what this study group is, is suggesting is that we restore something that we used to call the political horizon. Uh, to relations between Israelis and pal Palestinians. Um, 
in fact, a diplomatic horizon has been really the exception rather than the rule over the last 30 or 40 years. Uh, having just come from the Oslo decade, uh, we in a sense may have been spoiled to make the assumption that there's always something important on the agenda. There's always a sense of commitment uh, regardless of what the outcome would be, a sense of commitment uh, to re resolve issues uh, related to, number one, first the establishment of the State of Israel and then subsequent to 1967, uh, the occupation of, of te territories belonging to Palestinians in Syria and, and Egypt. In fact, that, 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 that isn't the case, and uh, it's been more, uh, more often than not, there has been no uh, political or diplomatic horizon, uh, and that's certainly the environment in which we've lived uh, since the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Camp David uh, fiasco some years ago, now almost ancient history, almost seven years ago. Uh, there has been no diplomacy on the agenda of any consequence, and I include in that the, uh, the roadmap. Uh, and the various stream of U.S. representatives, Zinni, whenever, whose names will, will be forgotten if they haven't already been forgotten. Uh, uh, so, so it's uh, it's unusual to hope, or it's not unusual to hope. It's unusual to expect, uh, certainly from uh, a study report that's that's as, as broadly conceived as the one that was just published, that th this will uh, establish a, a, a blueprint or reinvigorate or uh, change the, the conceptual view of the authors of a policy uh, who, again, in a radical departure from their predecessors, uh, have sought to undermine the foundations of more than a generation of U.S. policy in the re region not in all respects, but in many fundamental ones, certainly as they concern uh, U.S. action in, 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 in the Arab world. What's actually of, of more interest to me and the subject of, of my um, all too frequent trips to the region is, is to look at what U.S. policy, are, in, in what ways U.S. policy is being uh, uh, Re, 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 realized in an environment where there is no obvious or explicit p uh, political horizon. Um, this, uh, this U.S. policy uh, has been defined by two or three e elements. Uh, one is absolute opposition to the presence of Islamists, i.e. Hamas, in any Palestinian administration. Uh, this was clear from the outset of their election about a year ago. Uh, we all are familiar with the famous quartet uh, demands. Uh, now, countries can make demands for two re reasons. One is as a sincere effort to begin uh, productive engagement with their opponent. And the other reason, and the one that I think has motivated the U.S. and also the uh, Europeans over the last year is to make demands for the, in order that they fail. Uh, there's been absolutely no evidence uh, that those authors of these demands, which, like parts of the study group we report, were inartfully and carelessly formulated, uh, ever meant them as uh, uh, a, a set of uh, circumstances that would be further defined upon a sincere engagement with, with uh, the members of Hamas. In fact, they were put out there and left out there in order to, to fail because the intent was, certainly at the outset, to, to implement what, what I described last spring as a soft coup against Hamas, uh, to, to pretend that they hadn't won, to un undermine their uh, ability ability to govern and rule, and, and the, which would result in them picking up their marbles and, and going home, whatever that meant. Um, and so in, in support of this effort, we have the demands and we have 
what, what is called the boycott of the PA, the siege, whatever you want to call, call it, which was meant to starve the PA of funds. And that's a very an antiseptic way of de describing uh, undermining the ability of the Palestinian people to live uh, secure, healthy, productive lives, because you just can't isolate the effects of a cut cutoff of funds from the Ministry of Housing or the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, people's lives depended on these things, and they've had to uh, make alternative means, and they've done a job that would uh, far better, I think, than we would have done had our GNP imploded by 60 percent over, over months and half the police force not come to work on any day in health care been uh, less available than even it was in the past. Uh, now, in a, that, that soft coup has failed. Uh, recent uh, reports by the IMF and the World Bank point out that uh, the Europeans in particular have spent more money in Palestine this year than ever be before. Uh, there have been contributions from the Arab world and Iran so that while incomes have dropped preci preci precipitously uh, to about 40 percent of what they were the year be before, um, the Israeli suggestion at the outset of this effort a year ago, which was these people would be put on a diet, has been, has been made uh, true. They've been on a diet. They haven't been starved. And people can survive on a diet, and Hamas has survived, and the PA has survived. Uh, this, this policy uh, therefore failed. The, the idea of starving the PA failed. Uh, so that's where we get to the other half or the other uh, strand of U.S. policy. And that, in short, is basically to arm the good